it should come as no surprise that Apple considers a user's location to be private. And that means we need to ask for permission to use it. How you ask for permission depends on what you're trying to do. Would you like the user's location only when your app's running? Or would you like a user's location even when the app isn't running? Now you might think you'd only ever want access when your app is running. After all, what's the point in asking for information when your app isn't around to use it? Well, there are times you'll want both. For example, if you're making a map app that shows users how to get from their current location to your nearest store, you'll only need the location when the app's being used. But if you're creating an app that needs to be woken up when the user reaches the location, then you'll need access even when the app isn't running. iOS monitors the user's location on your behalf and automatically starts your app as needed. Using location when the app isn't running is of course highly sensitive information, so Apple provides a number of safeguards. First, if you request always access, users will still get the chance to choose when in use. Second, if they choose always, iOS will automatically ask them after a few days to confirm if they still want to grant always access. Third, when your app's using location data in the background, the iOS UI will update to reflect that. Users will know it's happening. And fourth, users can, at any point, go into the settings app and change from always down to when in use. In this app, we're going to request always access so our app can detect beacons in the background. Requesting location access requires a change to your app's info.plist file, which is the property list file we met earlier. We need to add that file the reason why we want the user's location, a string that will be shown in the iOS UI when the user is being asked to accept or decline our request. Now, because users can go between when in use and always freely, we have to add both keys. Privacy, location always and when in use description and privacy, location, when in use description. So I'll open info.plist file now, right click in the big space here and choose add row. I'm gonna search for privacy and then scroll down to location always and, that's our one there, boom. And I'm gonna add some text in here saying, uh, we want to help you find your nearest store. That'll be whatever you want to match your app, what you're trying to do. We'll also add another one. Again, right click and add, add row, search for privacy, scroll down. Oh, it didn't filter at all that time. Thanks for that, Apple. Okay, privacy. Uh, then scroll down and find location when in use description. Add that as well. And I'll copy and paste that text into that key as well. So when the user is prompted to grant location access, that text will be shown alongside Apple's own descriptive message. That's enough knowledge to get this app jump started. So now we'll open up main.storyboard to have a little bit of UI. I'll go to the object library and look for a label and drag that in. It's quite small by default, so I'll make it much, much bigger. I'll go to the attributes inspector and change its font from system 17 to uh, system thin and size 40. So much, much bigger like that. I'll change this text from label to be unknown, our default value for this label. And for constraints, I'll center it horizontally and vertically. So I'll control drag up from there to the parent view, hold down shift and choose center horizontally and center vertically like that. That's off the center by default. I'll just press this refresh frames button down here and it'll pop into the center. That label will show one of four messages depending on how close we are to our iBeacon. Now, if you have real iBeacon hardware, great, you can use its ID for that. If not, you can use an iPad or another iPhone to simulate acting as a beacon. Now, because iBeacons have very low energy levels, their range is limited and also very easily interrupted. Even something as simple as turning your back to the beacon weakens its signal dramatically. Based on a beacon's estimate distance to us, we'll show either unknown, far, near, or right here. Apple actually restricts our ranging to those values because of the signal's low energy nature, but it's more than enough for most uses. We want to be able to change that text at runtime, so switch to the assistant editor, and we're going to create a outlet for that label. Our control drag from there to our view controller code, and call this thing distance reading, like that. To complete our current step, let's make sure we have location configured correctly. I'll go back to the standard editor and open up viewcontrol.swift. 
We'll start by importing the core location framework, which is responsible for all of location tracking inside iOS. There is one core location class that lets us configure how we want to be notified about location, and will also deliver location updates to us. It's called CL Location Manager. We want one of those for our class. So we'll say underneath this property, get this sidebar perhaps. Underneath here we'll say uh, var location manager is a CL location manager, optional. That doesn't actually create a location manager or even prompt the user for location permission. To do that, we first need to create the object, then set ourselves as a delegate, and then finally we need to request authorization. So we'll start with a delegate. We'll say this view controller is a CL location manager delegate, like that. Next, we'll instantiate our location manager and make ourselves a delegate. Down here, if you did load, we'll say location manager is a new CL location manager. Then location manager question mark delegate is self. And to kick off the location request, we'll say location manager question mark dot request always authorization. Request now from the user permission to read their location. While we're here, by default, we're in unknown mode. We don't know how far we are from the distance. And when that's the case, we'll give our view a background color of gray. We've got no idea how close or how far away the beacon is. So we'll say view dot background color is dot gray, like that, a middling gray color. Now, creating the object and assigning the delegate, that's all code you've seen before realistically elsewhere. But this call here to request always authorization, that's new. And this is where the work actually happens. If you already have granted location permission, things will just work. If you haven't, iOS will request it now from the user. Now we're requesting always authorization here. And in our plist file, we have a string for that, which is this always and when in use description, this thing here. But we also added a second key, just the regular when in use description. And that's there because if you decide in your own code you only want to have when in use, you'd add this key here, and you wouldn't call request always, you would instead use dot request when in use. There's a reason to use that one with the other plist key if that's what you want. In this app though, we're using the always key, therefore we're gonna use the request always authorization. Use whichever makes most sense for your app. Now requesting the location authorization is what's called a non-blocking call, which means your code will carry on executing while the user reads your location message and decides whether to grant you access to their location. When they finally make their mind, you'll get told their result because we set ourselves as the delegate for our location manager here. And the method that will be called when they've made up their mind is called did change authorization. Let's write that now. Down here below, uh, did, if you did load, we'll say, did change authorization, that one there. We'll say if the status is dot authorized always. Did they give permission to read their location always when the app's running and when the app is not currently running? And now we have that permission, we can actually check whether monitoring of beacons and ranging of beacons is actually available on the current device because older iOS devices do not have support for this functionality. So we'll say inside this if, CL location manager dot is monitoring available for CL beacon region dot self. So can we monitor beacons or not? And if so, then we'll say if CL location manager dot is ranging available, then if we're here, we'll do stuff. So there's two calls here. First is is monitoring available? Can this thing detect whether a beacon exists or not? And if that's true, we'll check whether is ranging is available, which means can we detect how far away a beacon is compared to us? If both of those are true, finally, we'll do our actual work. And now at last, I'll press Command R to build and run the code on my iPhone XS right here. And boom, there's our permission dialog. Like I said, you'll see always and only while using the app, even though we specifically ask for always, users can choose a downgrade at this point. You'll see it says we want to help you find your nearest store. That's our info.plist message. And I have three options here. I'm gonna choose always allow. 
Otherwise, the rest of this project won't go so well.